Carol Bryan, um, just to let you know, Councillor Lentz is on her way. She might be just a couple minutes late, but did say we could start without her. Okay, thank you. Well, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, for the for the recording, just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mark Gasway. I am the finance director in the Clark County Auditor's Office. And today we are here to present to council as well as the citizens of Clark County, uh, the financial reports, which we are um, required to, um, to produce. Uh, I do want to apologize. We did not realize when we scheduled this meeting, it was the day after the uh, primary election. So our elected auditor, Greg Kimsey, is not able to meet with us this morning. He uh, had intended to be here, but he is um, otherwise occupied over in the elections office. So he will not be able to join us. Uh, however, um, we will be presenting to you today uh, three financial reports, our annual financial report and our trends report, which you're familiar with. And then we're uh, also going to introduce you to a, a new report that has uh, been created and um, Mitchell will talk about that uh, in a little bit. So the, uh, I just want to check and make sure that Council, we uh, last week sent out copies of all of these reports and I'm hoping that everyone received those. Yes. Uh, I see a few heads nodding. <laughs> uh, everyone had, has an opportunity to get those. Now I didn't intend that you would have a chance to read and memorize all those uh, and all the information that's in there, but I am going to introduce uh, some of the uh, components to those uh, today, uh, particularly with our annual financial report. Uh, I believe this year's annual financial report is 230 pages. And just so the council knows, that is, that is the minimum requirement that the county has to be in compliance with all of the the rules, the accepted counting principles, the uh, government accounting standard boards pronouncements. So for us to be in compliance, that is the minimum. Uh, now, no one reads that except accountant type people, but we're gonna talk about just a few components of that first. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So I'm gonna introduce the annual financial report. Very good, right there. So this, uh, report is comprised of several sections. First, there's an introduction, and we're going to spend a couple of minutes with that. Then there's the financial section, which has all of the fund statements, the um, the, the different uh, uh, the different types of funds that the county has. Uh, it, it also uh, contains the the audit opinion. Uh, the management discussion and analysis. So it's the bulk of what we have in the financial report. And then at the end, we're going to talk, I'm going to just introduce briefly a statistical section, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and that will lead into a, a different report, our trends report. So if we go to the next slide, please. So I'm, I, I have up in the left hand corner the section that I'm going to talk about and the page if you'd like to follow along in the financial report or at least the page uh, so that you can reference it later. So the important part about the introduction is the annual financial report is addressed to you as our county council and the citizens of Clark County. Now that's important because this is the, the financial document that represents the county when uh, when you look outside the county. So we are being um, evaluated based on the information that is contained in this um, in this report. So this just briefly shows you this is to you. This report is um, prepared on your behalf uh, for you and for the citizens of Clark County to represent us to outside agencies. If you go to the next page, next slide, please. Uh, I, I wanna point out on page five that uh, 
this uh, annual financial report receives a, an evaluation, a very rigorous review by the uh, Government Finance, o Finance Officers Association. And on page five, you can see the uh, certificate of award. Uh, it's the, th we have received this award for 34 consecutive years. And this, the 2020 annual financial report has uh, also been submitted and we would expect to hear back um, later this year on whether it's received uh, an award as well. The, the standards for receiving this award are, are quite high. We uh, receive feedback on how we can improve the report from, from GFOA and we implement those recommendations uh, each time we produce this report. Um, by the way, Council, if you have questions or comments at any point during the presentation, feel free to interrupt. This isn't meant to be a lecture. It's it's meant to be interactive. So I just want to let you know. So can we go to the next slide? Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask Mark, since he invited a question? I Certainly. In, thank you. What popped into my head right away is out of all the counties, how many receive this award? Uh, or have a record of 34 years in a row. How many have achieved that? Boy, that that's a good question. Uh, I I know that um, typically in the in the state of Washington, there's probably less than half that submit for the award. It's it's a very uh, sophisticated process, as you can see, 230 pages. Um, most counties don't have the technical expertise or the resources to produce a report um, to be submitted for this. I will find out an exact answer from GFOA how many counties actually uh, submit this. There's there's award for cities as well, so um, that's a that's a good question, and I'll find out that answer for you. So uh, on page ten of the of the introduction is our uh, the statement from our auditors, the state auditor's office in, in the state of Washington audits our financial report. And as you can see on the highlighted um, portion of the, com, uh, of the opinion, it says uh, the financial statements uh, referred to above present fairly in all material respects, the respective financial position of the government activities. That is the best you can get. Just so you know, if they say that our uh, statements fairly present uh, in all material expects, that's the best uh, opinion that we can receive. So uh, we're very, very happy with that. We're, we're, our goal as an office is to make sure that the information and the uh, schedules are as accurate as possible. Um, and we spend a lot of time uh, doing that. Um, it, in, it, uh, I'm, I'll introduce our uh, reporting and analysis manager and give him an opportunity to uh, introduce briefly the team that he has uh, that puts this together. They're on the call. I think I see a couple of them, um, but I think you should um, be aware of who these people are. Very skilled, very, very technical uh, individuals and able to produce this report. So uh, next slide, please. So I wanted just to point out a couple of sections for your reference. So a lot of times we talk about the general fund and on page 127, there are, there are several schedules in the report that have the general fund, but on page 127 is a schedule that I think uh, the counselors would be particularly interested in because it talks about the general fund, the, the revenues in this schedule are summarized by classification. So you can look at whether they're taxes or fees or grants, uh, revenues, but it also has the expenditures by classification by department. So a lot of times you ask the question, well, how much do we spend on the auditor's office? Or how much do we spend on um, you know, um, the, the sheriff's office? In, on that particular schedule, it breaks down those expenditures by classification by department. So it's a very useful schedule. And I just wanted to point that out. I, it, it's hard to go through this report and, 
and understand all the information in it and where to find it. But there are a couple of schedules that I think would be very helpful, and this would be one of them um, for council if you were to earmark that. Mark, I have a question on the general fund. I have yeah. seen your charts that extend the general fund out uh, 10, 15, 20 years with the balances that are anticipated or forecast. Um, where is that in the, okay. in the report? Very good. That's a good question because the annual financial report is a historical report. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do not have projections. We do not forecast in the annual financial report. Mm -hmm. The schedules that typically are our forecasts are created within either our office or um, most likely the budget office. And those schedules are not shown in a formal report. Those are forecasts. So mm -hmm. does that does that answer your question? So you've probably seen those as part of a presentation. Mm -hmm. um, but but we do not include those again. Um, the financial reports that we produce are historical. These are um, up to a certain point in time. Uh, a lot of times we will use that information in our forecasts so that we have a, uh, a base to forecast from. Um, and we try to tie out to make sure that we can show that we're starting at a, a specific point in time and then forecast forward, so. Thank you. I was looking in emails for those old emails, and it sounds like I need to continue. <laughs> yes. Well, and I've heard in the past um, comment made that, well, within the annual financial report, you know, I looked at the forecast information. They must have been looking at a different report because it is not in our annual financial report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I wanted to also point out. Uh, a, a section com this on page 199 uh, is a section uh, that shows revenue expense and fund balance by each fund. So, as you know, in the county, we have about 80 operating funds, uh, the general fund being one of those. Now, we spend a lot of time talking about the general fund because it is the most flexible. But on page 199, you can look at each of those funds by. Uh, that shows the revenue expenditure and fund balance by fund. So that is just, again, a, a page that you can earmark, that you can uh, say, hey, I wonder how the um, road fund is doing today, or actually uh, at the end of 2020. So, um, so page 199 would be a good one to, to earmark. Okay, next page. Mark, can I interject oh, yep. a question? Yep, jump right in, please. So, uh, and it was actually on the, the prior page that we were just on, as far as revenue, it showed, and I'm assuming that was in millions, just shy of 3 million in uh, interest uh, revenue. And I had always understood that we didn't have the authority to bank or invest some of our fund balances to generate uh, interest. Uh, so I, I'm curious as to uh, where that, revenue is coming from so so just just the opposite of that counselor we invest and bank all of our fund revenue so that is the investment income off of the uh, funds that we have available in fact uh, the treasurer's office would be not doing their job that is one of the, the responsibilities of the treasurer's office to make sure that our funds are properly invested and that we're receiving a return on those now, we do have to make sure we maintain liquidity so that we have available funds when it's needed. So they have the responsibility to make sure that we have um, both liquid funds and longer term funds uh, invested. Each of our funds that have fund balance have their funds invested and the revenue that the investment income is credited to that specific fund. All right. Yeah. So we'll have to talk offline about that because I was told just the opposite when we, when I had brought up the issue of uh, investing in in higher yield, um, yeah. commodities, if you will. It, uh, so it, maybe it, it was just the words I was using, um, but so it, we'll take that offline at another day to go through that. I, I see chair acquiring there. 
she I was just part of the say, investment committee. Yeah. yeah. She sits yeah. on the investment committee with the auditor and the treasurer yeah. and gets a quarterly report on what those activities are. So yes, and I would say, uh, Gary, the person to talk to is the treasurer or Sarah Lowe, the deputy treasurer, about this to, to see the reports of where this money is invested, what the yields are, uh, et cetera. They're pretty careful with it and they do a pretty good job. So yeah. check Thank with you. that. That's who you should check with. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to, we talked about that one. There we go. Uh, the last section that I wanted to bring to your attention is we have a statistical section. Uh, this, we have a lot of information in there. There's about 10 different statistical categories that we uh, can uh, include in our annual financial report. And this information is, some of it is uh, the same information. It overlaps a little bit with what we include in our trends report, which I'm going to talk about uh, a, a little bit later. But there is other information. And this is just an example of one of the um, pieces of information in our statistical section. Uh, this particular graph talks about the debt, uh, the the uh, the debt within the county and where it's coming from. And you can see clearly that um, school districts have a significant portion of the debt that's been issued in the county. Clark County is a very small um, percent, 5%, and it's continuing to decline. Uh, so th there's, again, in the statistical section beginning on page 213, there's a lot of interesting information that you have there. Um, and I just want to um, let the council know, anytime you have questions or would like to review some of these schedules, you're uh, always welcome to reach out to myself. Um, I, I can uh, meet with you individually or, or um, in groups or whatever you would like to, to you know, help better understand this information. Or if you, I, I know when you do have questions, you, know, you can feel free to call me uh, and I'll try and get that information to you. Uh, I, I, we want you to have the information you need to make the best decisions you can. And that's one of the uh, responsibilities that we have in the auditor's office. So uh, I am going to turn the time over to Mitchell Kelly, our uh, reporting and analysis manager, and he's going to introduce you to a new report that we've prepared for the first time this year and the, the uh, origins of that report. So go ahead, Mitchell. For the next slide, I just gave a brief um, description about what the PAFR is. Um, it's a report based on the annual comprehensive financial report. So all the numbers that are coming from this report are found in the annual financial report. It has a more citizen focused um, approach. So the PAFR is has a lot less of the technical details. It focuses more on um, items that uh, on a high level that citizens may be interested in. Um, it is another award program that the Govern Governmental Finance Offers Associ Association has instituted. And, and um, this year, we, um, we prepared this report through a fellowship program with an organization called Engaging Local Government Leaders and GFOA. So with that program, we um, prepared this report. And uh, the report provides uh, much more graphics and uh, um, a lot of the financial uh, data of the county in an easier to digest <laughs> format. So um, uh, we also have set up this report so that we will be producing this report in future years. Um, so all of the information that's coming from the annual financial report will be also um, reported in this in this format. So um, if you want to open up the report, um, the, the first couple of pages are just an introduction to the county and um, uh, describing what the annual, this popular annual financial report is, um, and give some demographics just about the county. And then, um, and then continuing on, it talks about uh, pictures of all the elected officials 
if you want to go to the next slide, um, this is just a, a countywide, it's called statement of net position or a balance sheet that gives the details of all of the assets and liabilities and, and net position of the county over a three year trend and separates it by governmental activities and then also business type activities that the county um, participates in. Um, so as you can see here, the total assets of the county have increased in 2020, as well as the liabilities have decreased, um, resulting in a positive situation for the county. Um, the assets, a, a lot of the asset increase has to do with the COVID, uh, pan, COVID-19 pandemic relief that we received um, and uh, has set up the county in a in a positive situation to help uh, uh, address the challenges of the pandemic. Um, like Mark said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm, I'm just going through this report, kind of giving you an overview of what the information is in the report. But if you have any specific questions, please um, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, um, Mitchell. I just, yeah. I just want to comment. I love it. <laughs> oh, good. I really do love this. It's very, I love the graphic uh, explanation. It's, I think it's really helpful and very user friendly for, uh, for the public. So, yeah. thank you. Yes. Sure, I was going to say the same thing at the end of your report, but I'll say it now oh. <laughs> uh, because when I initially looked at this after it was uh, sent to us, I just thought this is terrific because it is so accessible to the public. I presume it will be linked and then right beside it, the detailed format if they tend to go delve into the 200 and however many pages, but this is just uh, really very good. And thank you oh, thank for doing you. it. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, it is currently on the financial on um, the auditor's office reporting um, website. Mm -hmm. So this report, as well as the trends report and the more detailed um, annual financial report are all listed there. Yes. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so going on to the next uh, slide um, is page five that talks about the income statement or the changes in net position. Um, and just as an overview, you can see that the trends of the county, um, we received more revenue than we have in the past due to the um, grants that we received from um, the federal government primarily. Then also our expenses were also um, uh, increased substantially as a result of the response. Um, and so this is um, separating the program revenues, general revenues, and then also the expenses by function. Um, if you just look in your report on page six, you also see more graphics about um, the the property tax or the different revenues by source, um, noting that the property taxes are uh, the most significant revenues that we receive, um, and then um, um, decreasing down. These all of these three pages that that we're reviewing right now are government wide. So that's um, all of the funds together. If we turn the page over to page seven, this is focusing specifically on just the general fund. Um, and uh, the, and specifically about the unassigned fund balance um, that general fund has. Um, and and. Um, and just the health of the general fund. As Mark described, it's a more flexible fund um, that we have. The last few pages talk specifically about um, items that uh, people may be of, of interest uh, about. Um, the property taxes that we collect, as you can see, primarily um, are uh, remitted to other jurisdictions, um, but we are the collector of the property taxes. And um, and then the COVID uh, and page nine, the coronavirus relief funding, how that was spent, how much money uh, we received, and the benefit beneficiaries of of the relief funds that we received. And um, and finally, just uh, as, as some uh, a note, um, the capital projects and long term debt that the county is involved with, 
and kind of uh, an overview, a high level overview of what the capital projects plans are for the county. Um, I do want to briefly just um, thank uh, Tatiana Branich, uh, Reed Richards, and then David DeGroote, who are also uh, members of the reporting team on this call. Um, their tremendous work has produced all of these reports, and, and I'm very grateful for their assistance and their, uh, and their great work to produce these reports. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, right. the entire team. Okay, uh, next slide, please. We have one more report to go. And this last report is the financial trends report. Uh, you'll be familiar with this report. We've, we've presented this one to you in the past. And this report primarily focuses on um, several different trends that we have uh, tracked uh, throughout the county. I, I did want to point out a couple of sections that are in this report. Um, in the introduction of the report, there is a summary and a review of the Clark County fiscal policies. And for the council's benefit, uh, I just wanted to read through this. It's the fiscal policy plan was first adopted by the Board of County Commissioners in 1982 and amended in August on August 2nd, 1994. So these fiscal policies that were instituted um, many years ago are the guidelines that we use in the county uh, to help make sure our financial um, direction is in line with, with council. Uh, you can review, there's 17 policies that are on uh, those uh, three pages and they help uh, staff guide the decisions that we make. And when we note something that's out of line with one of those policies, we'll bring it to either the department's attention or maybe come back to council and say, hey, we've noticed that uh, this isn't quite in line with what we had been following in the past. Um, you know, our goal as uh, financial staff is to make sure that the, the long-term um, financial stability of the county is in place. So we try to look at things through the lens of, you know, where are we going to be, you know, three, five, ten years down the road. So these fiscal policies really help us uh, help determine that direction. And again, as council has indicated, this is the direction that they feel. So I would invite you to review those policies and let us know, are there things in there that that you think that we may want to um, update or as a council, you know, adopt uh, additional policies as well. So these are your policies that we are trying to follow. And I just wanted to um, point that in that uh, report, in that section, uh, that's where you can find those. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, there are a few uh, slides that, uh, examples that I wanted to point out. Uh, this first one on page one, government uh, revenue per capita, as you can see, this is a little bit unique graph. Uh, you'll notice that in 2020, the trend took a huge jump. Okay, governmental revenue happens to be the revenue re we receive from other governments. So we wanted to show the impact of receiving these grants, these federal grants this year, but we also wanted to show what it would have looked like if we had normalized it. So if we had not received the grants, you can see that there is a, a, a dotted line. And so you have an indication of, well, here's what happened, but here's what would have happened had we not received the grant this year. So uh, this, this um, version of the trends report is a little bit unique because where necessary or where applicable, we normalized the, the uh, information and the graph so that you could see the impact of COVID, uh, the COVID relief funds or the expenses incurred um, or where we would be had we not had those, uh, had the, the uh, pandemic. So if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, again, uh, employees per capita. Um, we know in 2020, we held hiring uh, 
flat or did not fill positions because of the uncertainty of expense, you can see that we continue to drop. Um, and last year was actually a, a, a bigger drop than we had in the past. Uh, so the, the number of employees in the county, the actual number of employees per, per thousand uh, citizens continues to drop. Now, at some point, will this, you know, continue to be sustainable? I don't know. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, levels of service that we're committed to, and we're doing the best we can to be as efficient and effective with what we have. Um, so, again, this is an indicator to council. This is a, this is a, a, a um, real, uh, uh, you know, the, this is where the, the rubber meets the road, right? Can we continue to deliver the services to citizens with the employees that we had? And when somebody tells council, well, you guys, you know, have all kinds of people there. Well, we haven't been adding a lot of people yet. The demand for services continues to, to be there from our citizens. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, Mark, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, a question on, on that last slide, um, particularly for, for next year and perhaps for 2020. Uh, in the next report or at some time, could you please separate out for us the employees that are funded by ARPA versus those that are in the general fund and continuing employees? Sure. Uh, in this particular graph, there are no employees funded by ARPA per se, but mm -hmm. next year, you're correct, as we add staff through the ARPA funding, we will make sure that we uh, show the impact of of those additional employees. Thank you. It almost merits three graphs, yeah. one with general fund, one with or whatever, one with uh, ARPA and one total. Just a I, thought. Yeah, I would envision uh, Rebecca, if you could go back one, please. I would envision something like this where we would show here's our employees, but here's our employees with the ARPA um, additions. So, mm -hmm. so we would have two lines so that you'd be able to show, see that. So, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, right there. Uh, this is an interesting slide. Uh, if you look at our um, employee benefit costs per, um, ingested for inflation, uh, it's flat last year. And again, I would attribute this to the um, level of hiring or the lack of hiring. We were able to maintain our uh, FTE levels. Um, actually, they were, uh, they were actually down a little bit because we did not fill positions. Uh, I would expect this to uh, continue to bump up, but it's an interesting uh, graph. Uh, an interesting year that we had last year. So I, I just wanted to point this out for you. Um, next Mark, slide, please. This is Kathleen. Oh, Can I yes. ask a question on this slide? Yes. Does this include any of the new state mandated benefits that were required to pass on to our employees? Um, do you have a specific one for 2020? I know in 2022, we have a new benefit coming in. I, I, I'm not sure which benefit would have been in 2020. The, I guess the I short guess the answer, short. Kathleen, is yes. This includes all benefits paid out by the county. So, um, Dave DeGriff, um, just to, those are county paid benefits as opposed as opposed to uh, uh, monies that are withheld from employees' paychecks. Does that help, Kathleen? Yes, thank you. Okay. I, again, I'm interested. I'm sorry. Could I just uh, clarify? Monies withheld from employees' paychecks, such as what? Health savings accounts, or yes, what? we okay. we have we have um, either workers' comp, unemployment, uh, FICA, all of the withheld um, taxes and things like that. This is. This is actually what the county pays on behalf of their employees. Okay. okay. And Thank again, you. the reason why I included this because the interesting impact on the trend for last year, it was flat simply because we, um, I think, artificially kept our hiring down, right? We did not hire and replace people. And so it's flat. I would expect next year that it will continue the trend um, that it had in the past. So. 
Uh, next slide, please. I have one more just example here. Again, there are um, about 30 different graphs in here, and I've only chosen a few uh, for the councils uh, to look at and to consider, but you're welcome to go through and look at all of the different uh, trends that we report on. We have revenue trends, expense trends, financial position trends, economic trends, and then debt. As you can see, our uh, debt as a county continues to decrease. Um, and, you know, it's, it's uh, I guess, a testament to the county's decision not to um, issue debt. We, we haven't had a debt issuance for several years now, uh, and we continue to pay it off. As you know, one of our top priorities is to make sure that our debt, uh, our debt obligations are paid. And so uh, this just uh, continues to show that um, we're doing that. It's continuing to decline. So next slide, please. Okay, I just wanted to again point out that all of these reports, all three of these reports uh, are on the uh, Clark County uh, website. They're on the auditors uh, page under financial reports. Uh, you're, they're available electronically. And as uh, we indicated previously, uh, council, uh, if you have any questions about the information in here or would like, you know, an uh, an, an additional opportunity to talk about these. We are always available. Uh, these reports are prepared as we indicated in our annual financial report uh, on behalf of the county. And um, for example, the trends report uh, is addressed to our, our council chair and um, they are prepared for you and on behalf of the county. So uh, we are welcome to, or you're welcome to um, speak with us or have questions anytime. So, so council, I'll turn it back over, or uh, Chair Quarry, I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thank you. Are, are there any uh, questions maybe on some of the graphs that weren't shown that you have any questions for Mark on at this point or anything that we've gone over so far? Um, so, yes, I, I have a question. I, I'm actually not for your immediate response, but just to kind of tell you that I'm going to be uh, following up with this at, at some point, because I doubt that it's on the top of your head. We've had constituents in contact with us asking for what is the amount of money you spend on X when it actually pulls from multiple departments and multiple programs. And the topic is homelessness. And um, so the question, you know, how much does the county spend to solve the problems associated with homelessness. So I'll be asking you, how could we research the answer to that? Sure. To respond, to, respond and, to the people. Yeah, probably the best way is just to, um, uh, you can send me an email or you can give me a call. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. to compile information because it, you're right, it does cross um, multiple categories or different categories. It's not um, a, item that we specifically report on in in the body of the financial report, but it's something that we can certainly pull out and have, um, you know, ready for you at any time. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Manthe. Uh, was Karen, uh, Karen, were you finished? Yes. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Uh, so just a couple comments. So first of all, I really, very much look forward digging into greater detail on our sales tax issues, you know, the tax avoidance issues, those border county issues. Um, and I would say, Mark, that you've been a, a trusted partner in that discussion for the last couple of years with me. And so I'm looking, really looking forward to working and digging into that issue. These three reports really reflect to me what an award-winning team you have. And it concise, clear, I mean, the clarity of these reports, I think uh, the public would be very impressed with and have great confidence uh, in the work you're doing. So I want to thank your entire team that's on board today and those that may not have signed on uh, for all the work you continue to do and the awards you continue to rack up. Very impressive. 
Uh, I did recall, uh, since I raised that question earlier, uh, my focus on the question of investments of some of our account balances, I do now recall that that discussion was focused on our pension fund. And uh, so uh, that's the area I'd like to offline uh, dig a little deeper into. Um, and certainly across the nation, there were many, some counties went bankrupt uh, years ago because of their uh, overextension uh, of their pension uh, fund liabilities. And so that was a huge issue uh, from where I had come from. Uh, so uh, I do want to dig into that. So thanks again for all these reports, the work you're continuing to do and uh, the work you will do uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, again, I, uh, I too want to uh, commend our staff. They are uh, very technically skilled. They're very um, aware. Each year we receive new pronouncements, uh, new requirements. Um, and so their diligence in making sure that we are um, on top of that is, is great. Um, just a real quick comment on pensions. There is a lot of pension reporting requirements in, in our annual financial report. Fortunately, in the state of Washington, the state of Washington runs our pension program. So we do not have the individual um, responsibility to do that. And I'm very um, grateful that our, our state um, is very diligent in running our pension program. We are one of the best funded states in, in the United States. Uh, our pensions are near, the, you know, probably in the top five of any state right now uh, for their for their health. Uh, this year, in uh, July of this year, we were able to receive a reduction uh, from the contribution of both individuals and the county. Um, it had ramped up a little bit to offset the effects of the Great Recession, but now, thanks to their management, we actually saw a decrease this year beginning in July. So um, the, the work that our, our um, pension folks do uh, up in Olympia is greatly appreciated, so. Thank you, Mark. That's what I was going to say. I, I'm not aware that the county handled any pensions, so it is the state that does it. And that's good to hear uh, that, you know, they are doing a good job. So other questions or comments by the council? of Mark and team. We don't hear any. Thank you, Mark. Uh, like like I said earlier, these are these are very good reports. I'm going to pour over them a little bit more, but I really love this popular annual financial report <laughs> uh, because it it shows some graphs and I uh, the public uh, it will help the public a lot. And I mean, it helps me too. So uh, we really appreciate it. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, do we want to take, uh, do we need to take a break? No. Uh, actually, do we want to take a break? I, we will have council time directly following this and that is how it was um, noticed. So, um, would you like to take a five minute, 10 minute break? Well, I see Karen shaking her head. No, but I, I would like five minutes if we, if we okay. had support for that. Okay. Let's just take five minutes. I wouldn't mind having one either. So uh, we'll see you back at uh, 9.50. Thank you. <laughs> 